Look at this. I got headphones <laughs> on. I got a mic going. <laughs> Baby. Huh? If only people could see you now. <laughs> hey, no video. We've gone through this before. All right, no all video. All right, all right. <laughs> Welcome to This Commerce Life. This is a podcast aimed at small, medium entrepreneurs focused on commerce. I'm Phil, your host, and Kenny, your co-host, will join us as well. And we're going to talk to you about the world of retail and commerce and how things are changing in the world. It's the way it was supposed to. So, well, my you goodness. Well, you don't have the big black backdrop now. No, no. I, I moved out into the light, like the rest of the basement where there's some more light. So... I just, you know, it's COVID. I needed to change it and, uh, you know, be a little bit different. So, yeah, because the other day, I think I was still in the studio when I was with you. So, yes. yeah. You're always in the dark, that one, that I am. one spot. <laughs> I am, I am, I am. Yeah, so I moved out in the light where I, I can see and people can see me. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. So we have Angie Baker on with us today. Um, yeah. Angie and I have known each other... Oh, I don't long. know. A really long time now. Um, we were uh, we were J and J buddies, really, uh, right? Like started in uh, category management. At least that's where I met you. I think I had. I think I was just moving to category management to sales strategy right at the juncture when J and J and Pfizer merged. Right, because you yeah, came over in the J and J, you know, and I was I was Pfizer, and then we were sales strat buddies together um, yeah. in the in the in the really dark days of sales strat um, for a little bit, <laughs> and then and then you went back to run Catman, and and I I went over to take that really horrible horrible <laughs> desk. Angie and I oh, share some it. very traumatic scars together. You can tell, like, there seems we to be wounds here that do. you're touching on, but nobody wants to open. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's just—it's really glamorous just to say, say that you. Yeah, it's really glamorous to say that you work for Neutrogena and Avino. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we should behind leave it like that, right? So, yeah, behind the glamour was not so glamorous. There was, um, there was a lot of work, which yeah. I partially involved, I think at the time, wasn't um, one of the plants was under remediation. So we were out of yeah. stock on, on half of our portfolio. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that took a lot of juggling. That was a really, that was a really ugly time, I think for both. Like, so I, I was That's on. The Neutrogena um, was struggling, right? That was the Neutrogena problem. Yeah. No so, so I was on, I was on <laughs> Sanpro. I was on women's health before that. So okay. I managed the um, carefree uh, OB, you know, um, you know, kind of debacle because um, I was in those really dark days. Uh, I can I think Kenny, um, that was one of our interactions together when I came over to beg for you not to throw us out. Probably. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember being that close. I would have kept OB carefree uh, could have definitely been on its way out. Yeah. St- well, stay free and carefree were that's well. stay free was definitely gonna unremarkable. Be so you guys would have like, begged for that one for yeah. sure. Carefree had a chance and yeah. OB at least was, at least OB was unique. Yeah. 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 So, so I ran that business that's and awesome. then, yeah. and then somehow drank enough Kool-Aid that, you know, when Angie moved over into category management, I went over and took the, Neutrogena Vino desk. And then like, I think I had like maybe two weeks of peace. And then, yeah. and then it was like, Oh, by the way, um, everything's being recalled. We've, we've stopped making things. You'll have five SKUs to sell. Maybe um, try and keep all your listings. Go. <laughs> no, wait, try and keep all your listings. And by the way, you don't get yeah. any relief on your number. Yeah, yeah. No relief on number, no extra anything, no trade spend, no nothing. Just. Um, what are you going to spend the money on? I, I remember that. I think Mario was pissed. Yeah. Because we couldn't get happy. anything. Yeah, yeah. We and couldn't we, get we anything. Couldn't, well, and the, I think the worst part. Jeez. Well, no, there, there are lots of worst parts. There, there were all sorts of things like every day it would be a different skew. So they couldn't really tell you what was and what wasn't. The, um, the, we were feeling the effects of, of the, the J&J Pfizer, uh, right. you know, kind of like melt together. And so 
the people running the plant weren't the people that were there before. And so they couldn't tell you what codes might possibly pass an FDA inspection and what wouldn't. And then at one point, things that passed FDA inspection didn't pass Health Canada inspection. So it was like every day was like, every day was like a war room call where you go, hey, so listen, I know yesterday I said that grapefruit scrub was okay. So today it's not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it's out, this is in, that's out, this is in, that's out, you know, and like salespeople would be like, I, I, can I just call you from the, from, <laughs> from the account's office <laughs> and we'll go through them together because I don't, what am I saying? Again, the account to wanted to like, give you that time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it was you pretty You know terrible. what, Sal, it kept things interesting. There was never a dull day, ever. No, no. So I, on I, that desk. I, one of the very few moments in my life that I probably couldn't wait to run away from a desk. Like it's just not fun. That, that you know, yeah, just busy, and then there's just like like misery. Even even, even Sampro, right? Like Sampro was a very defined problem. It was uh, it was a market that J and J hadn't invested in for a very long time. Um, it had shifted from being an innovation brand to a trade brand. So like it was pretty clear the things that you had to do. You had to be inventive. You had to beg, bore, and steal, um, but you know that's what we were. That's what we were after, right? But on that skincare business, it was like we have no idea. We literally have no idea, right? Like we have no idea what's happening. We have no idea what's going on. We have no grasp of how big the problem is or how small it is. And so I, I remember, like, I think to this day that might be the one of the very few few places that I. It was probably the longest 16, 18 months of my life um, running that desk. So, red. Yeah. 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 It was it had, honestly, it was really terrible. It was it really had terrible. its ups and downs, but I mean, we survived and you learn from that, right? You learn from it. That's exactly it. I mean, you move on. What's it, you know, it's not the end of the world. At that time, it no. sure feels like it, but. Oh, yeah. No, no. But, but, <laughs> but like, I've been through a lot. Like that probably is one of the scars that I kind of oh, like. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I always don't do really... say it aged me a little bit, but then, oh, yeah. you know, luckily they had a cream for that. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, if it passed FDA ins inspection, so. Yeah, yeah it did. <laughs> <Which is good>. <laughs> <Funny>. <laughs> so, so we, um, so I'm going to, I'm going to let Angie introduce herself in a second, but um one of the one of the things that we're so very interested um, today, Angie's um, one of the things that Kenny and I talk about a lot on the show is how um, you know people with our skills, right? So CPG retail skills, you have some strategic, some tactical skills, and as we kind of get a little bit older, and you've got to you know redo what you want to do with your life um, or what you want to do when you want to grow up, or if you just got tired and want to do something different, we get that question a lot is like, what do I do with these skills that I have from retail, you know, from this retail world that I'm supposed to be able to do something with. And Angie's got a really interesting story that we'll get into that we think is, uh, I thought was super relevant. Uh, I kind of told Kenny bits and pieces of this, but uh, I think it's pretty cool. So um, Angie Baker, you have the floor. Hi. Tell us something about you. Tell uh, So it, it's funny. So a very, um, very, very good friend of mine, one of my oldest and dearest friends used to say that I had a made up job um, because I could never really quite articulate it was what I did. Um, and then I've had a lifelong fear of public speaking. Um, it used to literally terrify me when I had to get up, you know, at, I remember. At yeah, and, I remember. and talk in front of people. Yeah. Um, and this, this is going back to sort of the question and it's, it's a bit of an introduction too, is um, I've always loved telling stories ever since I was a little girl, um, writing them, telling them, reading them. You know, I was always immersed in books. And that sort of became sort of the foundation of how I could then actually get up on stage. It was a few years ago in front of, just shy of a thousand people for 15 minutes and not have a complete breakdown. Um, wow. And I actually almost half enjoyed it. Um, and, and then I sort of took a step back and I'm like, so what is it that I do? 
am I a trade strategist, a category strategist, an account manager, a project manager, because I've done all of those. Mm -hmm. But at, at the root core of it, I always say I'm a strategist and a storyteller. And that sort of underpins um, a lot of what we do in CPG from a commercial operations, commercial excellence perspective, except for I find that um, in terms of how we define roles, we tend to get really stuck on, okay, someone's you know, a marketer or a trade strategist or someone's mm -hmm. in category, therefore they know how to do planogram. Mm -hmm. And the reality is they're both interchangeable because it's that strategic management um, that lies underneath that, that makes our skills so much marketable. Yeah, I, I think that is like at the core of some of this stuff, right? Uh, like if you think about, so some of the classic roles that you've held, right? Like you, you, when I knew you, you, you were a, um, you did category management, right? So for folks in the industry, you know what that is. If you don't know, uh, um, you know, we look at, we look at categories. We think about how a shopper shops a category. We start helping retailers figure out how to lay out products. So, um, you know, Right now, I guess you can't really go into stores or you're not supposed to be. But if you were going into a store and you looked at, you know, walk down an aisle, um, Angie Baker and myself would, would be people that would be thinking about like, how do we make you buy more product? How, how do we help you find stuff? How do we help you shop stuff? And then um, sales strategy, right? Like really classic roles. You go in, you, you teach retailers how to price differently, how to do things differently. You are in a lot of ways like neutral ground between marketing and sales um, to, you know, try and like, you know, change things up and, and, uh, you know, um, you know, so, so some really classic roles, right. But you're right because, um, strategists and, and storytellers, um, are, are really kind of what the jobs ladder up to, right? Like it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Tell, tell me more about where you've been after, like, so, um, I know you at J&J &J, and then I know some of what you did at uh, GSK after you left J&J &J as well. Do you want to, yeah. do you want to tell the audience? Um, Cause I think that'll help our group also kind of get that sense of like um, some of your classic training. And then um, I think when we get to kind of your, your story, it'll, it'll kind of knock people off their chairs yeah, a little bit. I think, I think. Is, this is a good way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, after J and J, I went over um, to GSK, um, and they were just establishing the trade and and category strategy functions um, within GlaxoSmithKline at the time. So I took over um, for category um, and did a lot of really great things um, in a lot of HBA categories. So um, a lot of brand reinventions. So taking a brand. Um, like Sensodyne with a lot that was working and then started to accelerate growth through developing these strategic category growth platforms. Um, and so in the case of Sensodyne, it was all predicated on, on healthcare. So we chose to partner um, strategically with drug customers in order to bring that to life. Mm. Um, one of the coolest things I did at GSK is I built a uh, shopper lab. Um, so GSK globally had these fantastic facilities um, in London, in Warren, New Jersey, and Singapore, so London, England. Um, and they decided to, to build these satellite facilities in Canada was the tech, test market. And so there was one room in the building that we had that was available. So I want you guys to imagine the dingiest um room possible it actually smelled a bit like mold it had this ambient atmosphere it was soundproof because it was an old vtc video conference room with a giant like imagine like a giant tube television with a vcr in front of it oh yay um and then i was supposed to turn this into <laughs> this fantastic tier two facility that you could come and sort of experiment with technology um and i learned more about you know hvac than i ever needed to know um, because we wanted to make the room a lot bigger, but unfortunately there was HVAC in the way. Yeah. Um, but we managed to do that and it was an incredible experience in, you know, learning agility, making sure you understood the strategy and, and the, the implementation plan behind that um, to the point where um, this, the, the interactive screen um, that we brought in uh, had to be delivered and brought up over a balcony via a crane 
Um, and then we had to take the windows off it, it, the facilities on the fourth floor. That's of the amazing. Building. So we had to take the windows off because no one thought to actually measure the doors versus the yeah. giant screen yeah. to figure out if we could get it through. Um, so that was one of the, the coolest things. Um, you know, a lot of that role was also dealing uh, with the international markets too. Um, so I was fortunate enough, enough to go to a lot of meetings um, in Europe, mostly Switzerland and London, mm -hmm. uh, to learn a lot more about the European businesses as well. I think it's GSK that has the really cool innovation lab in Stevenage in the UK as well. Is that GSK? Like, so it's not in Stevenage, yeah. it's in, um, begins with a B. It will come to me. Brentford. Okay. Yeah. Brentford. Uh, okay. Okay. And yeah. I yeah, have to yeah. say it was. Yeah. It it's pretty cool there. Still truly, truly impressive. Yeah. Like, so yeah. The, you've got um, sensors that you put on your skin to, to biometric um, sensors to understand how you yeah. physically react yeah. to as a sensory experience. Yeah. Um, so the lab I built didn't have that, but we did have some very cool technology in terms yeah. of um, understanding the retail environment. I, that um, was, that was really cool. I got a chance to visit. Uh, I got a chance to visit that lab when I was with uh, Nimi because we, we brought the biometric, um, the biometric band that Nimi was making in there. And um, they had some really cool like VR training tools. Uh, you know, they've, they've got a, uh, Kenny, they've got this VR training tool that I, I, I got to imagine right now during the pandemic would be super useful. So they put 3D glasses on you. And then if you're in front of a, a, a manufacturing machine, the VR tool, basically someone can drive from the other side and they can see what you see and tell you what to service. Um, do you know what I mean? Like, so you've got, you know, imagine cool. all these wheels and pulleys and everything and they'd be able to like, you know, in your eyes, they, they would circle things and go, this is the thing. So you, this is the piece you got to service, you know, pull it out this way. They can show you, you know, a little pop-up video on your glasses so that you can kind of see what's happening. Um, so they can real time help you as you're working through equipment. Right. So like at the time, I think that was like Nimi's almost uh, a year now for me, right? So probably 18 months I was there. And so at the time you're kind of like, this is cool, right? But then as soon as the pandemic hit, I'm thinking this is That's cool. more this, than cool. This is yeah, kind of what you need to- This is huge. Especially yeah. when all machinery comes from, from, most of it comes from China and yeah. they're not leaving and they're not coming yeah. back to shit, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. To do so, so like very, that That's crazy Yeah, cool. some very like cutting edge kind of stuff wow. that, you know, I mean- the the biometric sensors that Angie was talking about, I remember having those on. They can tell when you come into a room. So all the touching that you'd have to do, mm -hmm. you don't have to touch anything anymore because the my biometric sensors realize that you're there. They realize who you are, like all those sort of things. So very cool. Wow. Very cool. Wow. Um, a lot of that VR technology was yeah. based on eye tracking, just simple eye tracking, um, and then the ability to see in and out. So we did have uh, fixed and um, mobile eye tracking, and you could do a lot of fun stuff with that. Yeah. 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 Very cool. It, it's it's kind of disconcerting, too, because then you can tell when people are distracted, uh, you know, because normally <laughs> you'd, you'd be looking at the screen, right? But the eye tracking would actually be able to tell you, no, no, they're shopping oh, at Amazon here. while you they're think they're... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think honestly, one of my, my favorite things with the eye tracker is because you always had to um, just set up a quick test drive to calibrate it. Mm -hmm. And um, people may or may not realize this, but everyone's eyes are not perfectly straight. They're actually crooked. And so I think my favorite comment anytime that we set up test subjects is my eyes are crooked. We're all, uh, so just so you know, all of our eyes are not perfectly symmetrical. They are crooked. There you go. That's that's a great yeah. thing, right? Yeah, chill out. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, they're crooked. <laughs> yeah, like everybody else's, it's all good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, move on, move on. It's fine. <laughs> you are a hundred percent normal. Yes. So okay, so so you you've gone to GSK. You've done some really cool things, uh, but the cool things don't stop there. You get to do something cooler. I'm just like Oprah. There's more. There's more. Um, there's more. Yeah, it's like you get a car and you get a car. I say, do we get a car? 
No. Oh, okay. So not like Oprah. Is this the episode we get We're a gift sort box? Sort of like I thought. I was waiting. I thought. So what do we get? Is then, that a then, knock at the door? I hear a gift box. Like I'll, no. I'll go find. There we go. <laughs> So um, quasi like Oprah, not really like Oprah. <laughs> quasi Oprah then, yes. So I, um, I think, you know, when you've been doing something, um, and I, I sort of won't mention the number of years, but it's, it's, it's fairly long, um, you tend to get really comfortable with it. And the one thing I do know about the strategic management framework is the process and the thinking doesn't necessarily change over time and especially within the industry so the consumer packaged goods consumer healthcare industry that we work in whether a supplier or retailer um and i felt like i was getting a bit stale so i'd taken on some secondment so i went into project management um i built the shopper lab um and the company at the time so gsk had this incredible opportunity um where you could apply to be paired up with a not-for-profit um, and take your skill set to help them out on a specific mandate or project. Um, and I come from, you know, some, a really, really great family in terms of setting examples on you, you should give back um, to the community. And I just felt that the time was right. It's something I'd always wanted to do. Um, and it was just sort of a time in my life where I'm like, you know what, I can go away for six months because um, that was the, the, the time frame and really give it my all. So I applied um, and I have to tell you guys, the, the application process was very intense. It was like this 22 page um, document that sort of dug deep into your soul um, in terms of the questions and really had to get you to sit and reflect. Um, you had to get management sponsorship. I believe there was five interviews. Um, and, you know, it sort of came down to the last interview and I remember, you know, and they're like, why are you doing this? Like, it was a very simple question. And my first answer is because I believe in living the organization's mission. Mission and values are very important to me. Um, and I believe in taking that elsewhere. And, and then I got asked one of the best questions. And it sort of led me to this podcast tonight. And she's like, well, what if that's not good enough? Like, if, if our company CEO asked you why you're doing this, and it's exactly what I had referenced earlier is, you know, we become so comfortable with what we do. Um, it was time to step out of that comfort zone mm -hmm. and really understand what it is you can do um, from a strategic management and storytelling perspective. Um, so the original plan was for me, um, you know, when I'd gone through the interview process to be paired up with an NGO in either Africa or Asia. And I have to tell you, I was super excited about that. Um, I've been to Egypt, that's as far as I've gone in Africa, and technically part of that is Asia. Um, and I had never been um, to Asia, but was really interested in actually working in Vietnam. Um, so just outside of work, I like to do things that are a bit different. Um, so I, I take um, periodically classes in emergency management. Um, it's just a different way of thinking, but again, it's underpinned by the strategic management process. At, at this point, and, I have to mention that she went to Egypt during a revolution. Yeah, didn't really did. think anything of it. I knew her at the time. I, I was like, "Are you sure? <laughs> are you are you sure this is what you want to do now?" And she's like, ah, "It'll be fine." And it was. And, and you know what? It was. <laughs> and so total sidebar segue. You you actually really got to understand why the people did what they did. Um, I did actually look into buying a flat jacket just so you know if you ever need one they come in sand or khaki i remember um, yeah. i remember then, i remember getting updated on this process <laughs> yes. you cannot yeah. buy a black one because they are they're strictly for police services and fbi etc um so the coordinator that i was working with with the program had noticed that i, I take these courses in emergency management and there was um a mandate that actually came in from an organization in the US out of Washington, DC. And I had to really think about it because part of it was for really to take me right out of my comfort zone and go somewhere that it's just completely different um, and really immerse yourself in, the, in that culture and their way of thinking. Um, yeah. And there are so many possibly, you know, I don't want to call them jokes, but parables that you could throw in about DC right now um, because it was a very different place. Um, so I ended up going. Um, I left uh, in mid-June in 2019. 
landed. It was on actually, sorry, it was July. I landed on July 3rd um, to just this unbelievable heat that I have ever experienced. And I've been to some pretty hot places. Um, and I had just for the audience, I don't know if you know this, but DC is actually built on a swamp, um, which I find quite ironic. Um, and so it was just unbelievably hot. So, so sorry. So, so one of the things like, so Angie talked about like this really big interview process, the program itself is, is quite unique in the sense, right? As one is you, um, you interview and then they, they fund you basically to go away and work with this NGO, right? Yes. So um, they cover, if I remember right, right, they cover your salary, they cover your uh, replacement, rent. right? So yep. someone's got to do the job that you're going to do. And then they also cover some of your rent while you're away as well, right? Which is like, I think from a GSK perspective, remarkable, right? Like, you, you, you know, like it's one thing for a company to send you away, you know, for Habitat for Humanity for a day, which a lot of companies do, or you get to volunteer for a day, this drug company actually pays for you to go away and do non-company work. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It was an incredible and very um, humbling opportunity. Um, yeah. And I have to say, I'm, I'm truly grateful for yeah. the experience. Yeah. yeah. Um, so... As part of it, you have to find a place to live and then your rent is covered and, and you need to do mm -hmm. this fairly quickly. Um, and so, you know, I remember day one and I, so the address of, of the art, so it was Save the Children and I worked for the US Emergencies Team and I'll get to what they do in a second. I didn't realize it was 900 um, Capitol Hill Road. And I'm like, I didn't put two, two together until like it was day two and I'm walking down and I'm like, I'm standing and I'm looking at Capitol Hill and I'm like, I yeah. work like 10 minutes from this place. It was yeah, just, yeah. like one of these aha uh -huh moments. Did, did you walk me. to work with POTUS maybe every now and then, you know, or? Um, every now and then you'd see <laughs> a motorcade. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Where I did live, I lived in the flight path of Marine One. So anyone that knows the DC area, I lived at like basically the equivalent of Dundas Square. So it was DuPont Circle. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so I kept seeing Marine One fly over me, which again was, you know, I'm like, at first I was thrilled by it. By the end, I'm like, oh yeah, okay, that's, yeah. You know, yeah. that's someone them. from the first family or the mm -hmm. vice president or the president. Um, so the US emergencies team, what they do um, is they need to be ready to deploy within 24 to 48 hours into communities to look after um, at-risk children and families. Um, in the aftermath of an emergency. So if you think about Hurricane um, Harvey, Irma, Hurricane Katrina, um, this unit would deploy out into the field. And they brought me in actually to take a look at their deployment strategy and basically blow it up and rebuild it. Um, and so I'm, I'm pretty confident in what I do in, in, in CPG world. Day one, I was completely terrified. <laughs> I would have been I'm freaked like, right out. Holy I shit. I just... Yeah. Excuse like, me, is there a planogram I can look at? Or uh, <laughs> where's all the people? Lab, I can go play. Where's my um, AC Nielsen license? I, I, <laughs> my workstation. Um, yes, exactly. And I just like, you know, I, I come in and and so even more like to me, sort of one of these other moments. So the, 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 the individual that is overseas um, the U.S. programs, which is what U.S. emergencies that save the children um, fed into, um, happened to be a Kennedy. And I'm like, who looks remarkably like his famous uncle. Oh and my. I just, again, it's like one of these things. And I'm like, now I'm even more terrified. Yeah. <laughs> because actually at first someone had to tell me who he was because I didn't know. <laughs> wow. That's hilarious. I mean, and then they just blame that on Canada. Um, yeah. So, so I walked in, I was completely terrified. So they gave me the brief um, and I'm like, okay, all right. So strategic management process, right? Thinking, set the objectives. What is it that we're trying to do? What's the vision? What are the outcomes from what to what and by when, right? I had six months to deliver on this. What are the people processes and tools that are involved? Um, and so we just started to break it down 
And then as a strategist and storyteller, one of the things that we do is I held um, a series of workshops with a lot of the cross-functional stakeholders to get a really good idea on what deployment looked like um, and where it could go and what possible improvements could be made. Now, <clears throat> I don't know if anyone's tried to rent um, inexpensive um, furnished accommodation in DC. Um, it's very difficult to do. Um, and so I was having a very, very hard time finding a place to live. Um, and so also at that time, because um, part of the assignment was to deploy, uh, the U.S. emergencies team was responding to an emergency um, at the U.S. border, and this was the, the migrant refugee crisis. And so I was deployed to El Paso and, and Las Cruces um, about a week and a half after I landed in D.C. Um, and just so you know, it's actually hotter in Las Cruces than it is in Washington. So literally for six months, I don't think I was I was cool once. Um, and, and so I worked down there for three weeks um, in um, some refugee migrant transit centers, just helping the migrant families move on to their next destination after they had cleared detention. Um, and again, such an incredible and very humbling experience in so, terms of just compassion and humanity and people wanting to help. And, and, and these people, just the inspiration that they would give you in searching for a better life. It's kind of crazy, right? So um, Las Cruces is uh, in New Mexico, right? Right on the border of El Paso, which is kind of like uh, just on the, uh, literally on the other side of um, Mexico. Um, we we so actually right were the US, right on the other the side of Juarez. Yeah. 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 yeah and Juarez um, is not, uh, you know, not necessarily a resort town on any, on any day. Nope. You got to duck it, a lot. It's not. There, yeah, there are it, there I mean, are a few famous uh, movies in the last couple of years talking about El Paso, and Juarez, and yeah, Juarez is just yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's got yeah, a lot yeah. Of none of them are complimentary. So no, yeah. no, yeah, a lot of mayhem. But I think so. So I mean, one of the things that you know crazy. we in our industry do, especially sort of the the commercial ops experts, um, strategists, storytellers, is we observe. Um, and so one of the things that I got to see was deployment in action um, mm. and really begin to understand that. Um, and I got to do quite honestly, a lot of very cool things. I attended community partnership meetings and facilitated them. Um, I think one of my, my biggest memories was I was sitting in a community partnership meeting, helping the on the ground team lead facilitate. So we had ICE and CBP, and then we had everyone that was involved um, in assisting the migrant families. And I remember going in with the mindset um, that I didn't want to like ICE and CBP um, just because of everything you had seen. You saw it on the news, news right? Right. Um, I came out actually understanding and respecting them a lot more. Um, and, you know, it, there were stories that I, I just, in, in the sake of privacy, I won't repeat, but um, they're pretty horrific to listen to. And, and, you know, they're doing a job, they're doing as best they can. Mm. Um, and I remember trying to kind of using that strategic management process and thought leadership, trying to diffuse the situation, um, which we were able to diffuse. And then I remember, so um, the CBP, their, um, their manager, who was the deputy chief liaison for CBP out of Washington, DC, actually came over and thanked me um, for helping for one and for diffusing and for not judging. Um, and so me being me, I'm just like, oh, I'm Canadian. I don't have an opinion. Um, and then, but it actually got me an invite to the White House. So, wow. Yeah. Um, so I, I took it. I wasn't the West Wing um, because a certain someone was in residence that day. Um, but I did go and get to see the East Wing and, and, and the big formal dining room. Um, and, you know, it was this incredible sense of history and purpose. Um, so when I was done with DC, uh, or sorry, uh, Las Cruces and El Paso, um, went back to DC to start my life there and to start actually using the skill set that um, I didn't, I knew I had, but I actually didn't quite appreciate it mm -hmm. until I actually had to learn a whole new language, um, learn a whole new sort of set of ways of working and, and pace 
And, and one of the things, and I know quite often in, in CPG and consumer healthcare, we say we work really, really um, slowly. I gotta tell you, I learned a lot about how slow you can go in order to deliver on the right strategy. And I spent wait, wait, almost- more. What, what does that, more? Yeah. So, what does that mean? So basically I had one job to do, which was to rebuild this deployment strategy. And so okay. you guys know in this industry, whether retailer or supplier, you are juggling how many balls at the same time. Right. All the time. I, I yeah. had one ball. That was it. Hmm. I had one ball. And, and, and the funny thing is it enabled you to actually really focus and, and you know, you, the age old expression on peel back the onion. Yeah. Um, but to really get to the heart of the matter um, and this is where I, I, I learned the difference between strategic planning and strategic management. So strategic planning is what we do in this industry. So it's multiple priorities. It's multiple mm -hmm. things yeah. um, running at the same time with limited resources. So not for profits, you know, it's commonly known they have limited resources. Mm -hmm. And the one thing I think I brought back, you know, to my day-to-day -day world when I came back to Canada was focus on those one or two things that are really going to drive strategy. And, and it was funny because my, my line manager who, who since has become a very good friend of mine, Megan was always like, and slow down, we're good. And I just didn't know how to operate at a pace like that. Can't slow um, down, must keep going. Must, must keep, keep going. going. Exactly. Well, because if you're not, what are you doing? You think you're not doing anything, right? Because yeah, you're yeah, supposed yeah. to be completely stressed yeah. out and not finish anything properly on any given time. Exactly. Yeah. So it's, um, you know, I was able to make an impact. So we presented right up to their executive leadership team in terms of what we did. Um, and it really did streamline um, their deployment process. So just by way of background, so let's just say a hurricane is hitting. Um, you have a number of pre-planning meetings in terms of identifying a team that can initially go get the ground, like in ground set up. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, they had a system to manage this, but it wasn't really working. And so basically there were Excel spreadsheets, there were post-it notes of people that may or may not be available to deploy. And so, you know, a simple question of how many can deploy, um, at the time it was Hurricane Dorian that was bearing down on the US, but fortunately missed it. Um, and it took me a few days to figure that out because the system wasn't working. But using that, that thought leadership behind strategic management and workshopping, um, we were able to actually do that real time um, by the end of it. So all I had to do was click a button, um, hit print screen, and there you go, there are the people. They're ready, mm -hmm. willing, able to deploy. And then the importance and significance of that is you have to remain calm at all times when you're going into a situation like that. Um, and so this is one last stress that everyone knows what to do. All of the SOPs were documented. Um, all of the strategic um, pillars were documented. Mm -hmm. All of the training plans were documented. Mm -hmm. um, and I really did see the power of one strategy management um, and the power of actually just saying, okay, what are we going to do? Let's do those one or two things and let's really do them well. Do you like that? Like, I, I'm not sure if I would like that. Uh, I, I think I kind of, I, I don't know if it's a product of the environments I've been in, but I, I kind of like being able to juggle a lot of things at the same time. Uh, I, I'm not sure if, I think it, I, I don't think I there's don't a right or wrong really answer. I don't know if we ever do it really well. I, no. I, I, I think sometimes that's, no. I kind of like what we don't. I'd like to think <laughs> I could do sort of Angie's thinking, yeah. but our worlds don't work that way. But I, it, I, in a lot of ways, I wish they would. I don't need. I don't know why we need to worry about fifty things at the same time, and really, probably forty-five of them are really inconsequential. I mean, it doesn't really matter, and yet we worry about them, and they become part of this mess. And really, the couple of things you really should focus on is all you should focus on, and I the other shit will so. just probably go away once you get the the, the main stuff done. Like Phil and I are, are, are cut from the same cloth. And, and I used to think if I wasn't managing 30 things then I was doing something wrong. 
And if I had a moment to myself during the day, I used to think, okay, now what do I do? What like, have you done? Yeah. yeah, I get it. I'm slacking off. What's I going I bought, on? I bought multiple <laughs> categories because I never understood anybody who bought one category, yeah, two yeah, categories. Yeah, yeah. What do you mean by two categories? That, yeah, that's, yeah, that, yeah. that's like, that's lunch. Yeah. Like, what are you doing exactly. for the rest of the day? Like, well, you got nothing else to do. You buy one category all day, every day. Oh my God. Yeah. Like, why do you that's function? That's basically what I did for six months. And I just don't know. If so, I'm, I'm like, I'm just thinking like, I don't even know. If, that's hard to wrap your head around. That's. It was an incredible experience. So you, you hear a lot about self-care and being present. I was present at every single day because I had this focus. Now, I'm not suggesting that CPG or consumer healthcare companies zoom out and do one or two things. <laughs> um, Don't worry, they won't I anyway. We so. might be <laughs> biting off more. I would, I would kill to that. see that. I, <laughs> I just, <laughs> Although at times, the way, with the way we launch things and the way we do yeah. things, we probably should do one thing at a yeah. time, but that's yeah. a whole different argument. Well, Phil, challenge accepted. I'll see if I can do that. Um, but it, it does, it, it teaches you how to be present. And, and huh. that- quite honestly, is is an amazing feeling. Um, and I felt centered the entire time. I, that mm-hmm. it may be a little bit of a flaky word, but I felt centered and present and involved and engaged. Um, and largely because, yeah, it's something new. You're doing something that fuels the soul because it is for the betterment of people. Right. But also it was using my skill set do this thing, this one thing. And like I say, do it really well. So that's, that's my story. Yeah. It's, it's, it's what you were doing it for too, that I think really, because I guess what we're all doing is we're talking about it from the perspective of what we're in. So, or what you were in, were in, or what I was in. So whether that was launching a planogram or a product on time, which really in the grand scheme of life, really doesn't mean much of anything. I know the skincare in the market, whether I get mm-hmm. it to the shelf tomorrow or next week, mm-hmm. really nobody's going to die from that. The stuff you're doing, people will or can die. Um, if, you know, to put a blend, if your shit's not together, yeah. lives get lost. Yeah. yeah. Like it could be really, I mean, the, yeah. the consequences are not, so you missed the launch by a month. Like who cares? Like in yeah. 10 years, is anybody going to care? No, well, nobody cares even the day after. But this I is like, I came, you know, yeah, I came back a lot calmer yeah. that way. I mean, I a different I, perspective. I, yeah, different perspective. Like, I still care about what I do. For sure, yeah. do. You know, managing yeah. my team and want to sure. deliver yeah. the best possible, you know, performance possible. But also, having said that, I'm like, okay, so we'll just move this ad, or we'll do that. Yeah, like, whatever. Change do. it. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Move it. It's not a big deal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We yeah, gotta yeah, launch yeah. next week. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It could yeah. be the week after. It's yeah. not gonna. It's all good. Yeah. 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 Life will go yeah. on. Yeah, I think yeah. it's um yeah, it's a perspective I think, thing. I think that's why you gotta yeah. try to if you could do things like what not not every not not every program like that is available to most people either. There are programs you can go to get through the community, churches, etc. There's always ways, but you know, that's pretty impressive that someone's willing to pay yeah. for you to literally bugger off for six months. I mean, you're probably, you know, the company you're probably a little more loyal to the company at that point. I mean, there's because if they've done something really nice. For you, yeah. but, but, for but other I think people, it's just yeah. Good. I yeah. think the part that um, kind of really like when Angie and I were talking about this, um, the part that really it it um, it's 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 funny because it comes up a lot, right? So, um, you know, when when I talk to like my wife, right, um, she works at the Royal Ontario Museum, and there are moments where she kind of says to me why, why don't we do these things? Like, why don't we, why don't we have these kind of like best practices? And I always say to her, look like the things that I'm learning that, that Kenny and I talk about on the show is when you, when you work for big companies, you learn, you, you, I fail to appreciate the training and the skills that I derive from there um, because they really are best in class practices. Right. And then you, you fail, you know, and, and she's going through that now. Cause she's like, my God, I don't have. And I said to her, babe, like 
it's just like without being elitist, it's pedigree, right? It's because you came up with a certain set of training and a certain set of skills. You expect there's a way to do things, right? The world isn't like that, right? Like there are parts of the world where we've been privileged to learn those skills. And now we're all kind of translating, you know, and I think that was the biggest part of this was we have these skills, right? And like, as you're, you know, like people who are thinking about doing other things in their life, they need to stop and recognize what they like. You, you have classic CPG training, right? Like you are a unique person, but you have classic CPG training, and you were able to step into a meeting with ICE. You know, like and like, what the hell? Like, <laughs> and in a, in a situation that we all watched on the on the television, yeah, that was not pleasant. and contribute and contribute, was, right? Like you know, that is um, that's huge. That's, like that you is, actually made a difference. Like you made a real yeah, difference to yeah, yeah, people, yeah. like a real like, difference. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. It feels good. And I, I will echo something that Phil said and, and Phil knows this too. So both of us are pretty good at what we do. Um, really good at what we do, but I actually underestimated the value of it until I did that. And then I clearly understood a lot more about what strategy can do. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a, it's, I don't know. Every day it seems to be more relevant to me, right? Like every day. Yeah. You know, every day we get asked those questions, right? Like, how would you guys do this? Right. And then, and then you kind of go, oh yeah, that's something we did every day. Right. And then, you know, you share that and then I see, oh, wait, 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 stop talking. I, I need to write all that. I'm like, and you're thinking oh, like, like, wow, we, really? <laughs> we, do, we do this all the time. Right. Like, but, yeah. but you do realize like, wow, we, we, we do a lot that, you know yeah um and i just i mean that was the reason for doing it and and i'm honestly still trying to figure out what i want to be when i grow up or if i grow up ever um but mm. it certainly taught me a lot about taking risks as well right and so for anyone you know that is listening is is if you have an opportunity to do something like that take the risk because it yeah. is very rewarding yeah and yeah. it it really does change and i like kenny how you teed it up to it changes your perspective not only on your career but in your own personal life as well i think it's just for everything if it just does it for um like on i mean this is why i think it's too. if it just does it for the career or if you just do something you know because it'll better the career that's that's good and if that's what motivates you then then god bless you i'm, I'm happy for you but really when we get to certain ages all of us is what we're supposed to be doing is trying to give back to a greater good than mm -hmm. just ourselves mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right i mean you mm -hmm. feel good and that's that's reward that's that's wonderful but the fact you, you you helped a lot of families who are in crisis no matter what dumbass says in the office when he's watching cnn or fox because he has no freaking clue go down there talk to the people these people yeah. are these, these are people they're humans they're they're yeah. just they're, they're coming yeah. to you because the whole motto was you're supposed to try to help people like you were the land to go to like Christ yeah. almighty act like it yeah but it's amazing I, yeah it, it yeah i i mean it i wouldn't want anyone to be in harm's way again but if they asked me to go back i would go back in a heart because you've seen it too and you've seen what, what what it does for people like again there's there's always going to be circumstances that yeah i get it that mm -hmm. ugly stuff happens you know, there's not the right people. I get all that, but the people yeah. you must have helped must have felt like, wow, like, yeah, this, these yeah, people's lives have changed. It. Yeah, right? I still get goosebumps when I think about it. Um, and I get goosebumps funny. for you. It, it took me a year to actually really understand and value what it is that I did. Um, I think it's to, incredible. Like to see Ben, it's, I haven't really spoken about it much to many people mm -hmm. since I've been back, and I've been starting to kind of open yeah. up more because I just, yeah, it was this. Thing and and you know again to the audience i encourage you if you ever have a chance do it now um, this is something you're thinking of doing maybe uh more in your own country or even in your own city on a smaller scale i'm not saying it has to be you know sitting at the border i mean thank mm -hmm. god i mean even i mean the neighbor we have to the south of people are nice it's one person sort of but that that you know we don't have an issue on our border but we have issues within our cities um schools yeah. churches i mean there's a lot of people that are struggling in our own societies yeah a lot of immigrants who've come in looking for the better world because we are in the land of, you know, of plenty, 
um, and haven't had, um, haven't seen it, haven't had the chance at it. We just don't know how to do it. And maybe our systems aren't even set up to do it well. Like we can let people in. We got that figured out, but we don't know what to do, do with them when they get here. And it just causes nothing but, you know, racial unrest yeah. for, for yeah. what? And then, you know, you label people and then it's all immigrants and, you know, the usual stuff that we all go down. But is there something you're thinking that you might be able to do at home or close to I home? I think, you know, on a, on a volunteer basis in the short term, absolutely. Um, it's something that I have been looking at. I just haven't found the right thing yet that I know mm -hmm. um, you can, you know, really commit the time and passion and energy to. Mm -hmm. um, but for sure, definitely. I do have a real big passion for emergency management as well, because um, when an emergency hits or a hurricane hits or a tornado hits, that emergency plan and, and, and the deployment process in terms of getting aid out to communities is critically, critically important. Um, so there's, you know, there's ideas and opportunities in terms of working with the municipality to make sure that emergency plan is up to date yeah. um, from a strategy perspective. Kind of use it for the pandemic and the rollout of the vaccine. From a budget perspective. Uh, exactly. Um, I mean, seriously, I mean, we haven't seemed to have done that very well. They don't exercise the plans enough because of budget constraints. So, you yeah. know, they do look for volunteers in that way. So it's very definitely in scope. We, uh, Kenny and I were joking about that yesterday or last, last episode. Cause we were talking about it. Was it last episode? Last episode. It was yeah. Just you and I. Cause we, we were talking about how, what they, instead of going to the military, what they probably should have gone is to either a yogurt, an ice cream company, McKesson, uh, Go you to know, the guys who deal with this stuff. Pretty or, skilled yeah. at getting every day. Pretty I mean, skilled at, at getting distribution out to multiple points as fast as possible. A lot of people do um, a lot of vaccines. Community pharmacy does a lot of vaccines. You know, yeah. I mean, uh, I mean you so know the what I military mean? Like, is really nice, but but we're like, you should have given it to retail. Like, <laughs> let, let's let's push out a prepack. I got it. No problem. A vaccine prepack. I got it. It's it's going. <laughs> It's going everywhere. <laughs> you want me to build a display for it while I'm at it? Like <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Wasn't there? There was a beer company though that loaned out their their freezers and their refrigerated trucks. I can't remember which one it was in order to to transfer or transport the Pfizer vaccine, um, which is yeah, alternative usage. I love yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But there's ways yeah, to yeah. do things. I mean, that yeah. that vaccine was a little trickier than than most even most narcotics. I mean, uh, that's yeah. a Minus really, 70 is. That's, is that's, a, that's, a, that's a real yeah. Yeah. cold chain issue. Yeah. But the deployment thereafter, I mean, there are a lot of experts within the community. I mean, again, you, you don't want to run it down right to that level necessarily, but yep. I mean, you could have bugged the McKessons and the drugstores of the, of the country where in all communities that are there pharmacists can do back but, you know but, I mean? but there's the so many is, ways to do things. Yeah. I mean, we, we kind of went down this road last time, but we really do. We, we, we know how to do this, right? Like, <laughs> you, know you know what they like, need? They need a good yeah. strategist to figure out the deployment strategy. Yeah, well, we have one on this show. If you, yeah. if you want to reach us through this show, do we'll it take now. Take a small cut, and then uh, Angie Baker's all yours. And then she's yours. So no residuals unless she's really good. Canada. And then we'll think about it. Um, if you're dealing with a vaccine and you need, you need. Uh, this well, there'll be another one coming. This commerce like, life is willing else to, coming. to get Angie Baker out to you. So yes, yeah. we will loan Turn her. Me out. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, guys. This has been really that's pretty cool. That's a great story. Yeah, yeah it's no, pretty it's cool. it's uh, good for you. But but thank you, right? Like, because I I do think uh, it's funny because I had two conversations uh, this week with folks. Um, one, he's he's been in brand management for the last twenty years. Uh, and he said to me, you keep asking me what I want to do when I grow up. I have no idea, but I just, I just celebrated my 20th with a company. So it's not, uh, I'd be an idiot not to see the writing on the wall. Um, you know, and, and I kind of need to get at her and, and figure out what's next. Right. Because I, I just don't, I don't want to, you know, like my 21st work anniversary might be my last one. And, I don't really want to be sitting here with not knowing what I want to do. Right. So we, we had a very similar chat about like, well, I don't know what I have. Like I can plan a brand. I can. And I was like, dude, do you understand how many skills in there? You just need to take them apart and see what you have. Right. Um, so I had like two of those conversations this week alone with people that are, you know, starting to think about like, 
crap, what do I do with my life now? Right. Um, so I think this was really helpful because it's, um, it's an angle that not many people think about. Um, perhaps they don't ever get the opportunity you have, but certainly there's like lots of, it's a pretty unique opportunity. Like this yeah. specific one is pretty unique. Yeah, yeah. This is a, yeah. this is a massive multinational yeah. um, that has the, uh, the, the, the purse to do it and people like you that can do it for them. Yeah. But that's not to say that within your, your um, communities at large. Yeah. You have there skills. There are not a lot of things yeah. that you could go in yeah. and help um, food banks get foodies yeah. or deliver foodies yeah. or, uh, yeah. feed people on the street. I don't, I don't care what it is, whatever you have to do, do. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Help, help them actually get this vaccine yeah. done a little, maybe a little more efficiently. I mean, yeah. yeah, there's tons of stuff to be done out there. Good for you, Angie. That's pretty cool. Angie Baker. Thank you very much. Cool. Um, if people have questions for you, um, is there somewhere is LinkedIn kind of the best place to find you? Yeah, I would send it through LinkedIn. Um, okay. and again, yeah, if anyone does have questions, please ask. Um, okay. It was okay. Nerving. I freaked out on day one, um, but it got infinitely better very quickly. Um, and, you know, had a lot of fun with it too. Good for you. Good for you. Good for yeah. you. Thanks for jumping on tonight. That's cool. Thank you for hosting. Yeah. This was lovely. Thanks. No, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a cool story. Thank you. Awesome. All right, guys. All right. Have a really great night. Thank, Thank you. you as well. You too. Bye. Bye. Stay on for a second. Bye. Ciao. Yeah, you Bye got it. You. Take care. Bye. Thanks. Pretty interesting. That's funny. Uh, How cool is that? It's super right? cool. It's, yeah. it's, and I don't want people, and I, I, cause I get it. Cause I mean, cause we're both of that, sometimes that minds. I mean, yes, yeah. a big company able to do it, but that, that's yeah. not the point. The point is no. that you can take the skill sets you have to do even again small things in your community yeah yeah how they yeah, how yeah. they i mean you know i mean we're pretty impressed that you know we do got the same thing churches and, and institutions feed a thousand people on a weekend maybe if they had some of the knowledge not sure that i have or you have maybe other people they could do two thousand people because yeah. it's just a matter of you, you know or you yeah. can see the process yeah yeah i i agree i i think it's uh you know it's it's one of those things that i i'm hoping people take that away from this, right? Is, is, uh, you know, if you get the opportunity to rescue and save people, uh, I hope you take it. But, but really the takeaway is like the training that we get in this industry and the experiences we have, yeah, we all take for granted. Applicable. I know yeah. we take it for granted. Yeah. hundred percent. You know Cause when you know, people say, what do you do? Yeah. If you're a salesperson yeah. or you're you know, in brand management stuff, or you're a you buyer, know, yeah, yeah. like, yeah, they're all looking yeah. at it. So, so basically you add boxes to waste and you, and you yeah, yeah. make us buy a million things we don't need. Yeah. And thinking, well, yeah, that's kind of it, but no, yeah. <laughs> not all of it. You know, we do other things. Yeah. 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 Or we're definitely yeah, capable. Yeah. Of doing yeah. other things yeah and then i do think it does become an age thing you know if, if you think of all the all the pro bono stuff we've done over the years um even the podcast to some degree yeah because i do i know we've had listeners that said I, I didn't know that that that's how it's done or hey yeah. you know what i listened to yeah. it I, that was interesting because i i, I lived to learn something you know and i didn't have to pay anybody and we're thinking yeah well, someone's already paid us for this information yeah yeah, yeah, like, yeah. we've been paying yeah, yeah. already it's we're not just a big deal we're just helping it's, out the, yeah. ro the role of what we should have as we get older is that, you know, if we have this information, I mean, yeah. share it. Once yeah. Once agree. Once agree. I agree. I can make some coin on it yeah. because we, like we're consulting, but I mean, we do so much free stuff. Why not? Yeah. It's Why, true. What the hell it's you true. should do something, right? It's true. It's true. Yeah. So as Richard's not listening to that and thinks that that's what we mean with his stuff. Yeah. We, we don't mean no, you, I mean Richard. Not, Richard. No, not you, you, you pay, man. Other you, you people. <laughs> other people. Not you people. <laughs> Oh, man. Just in case, oh, you know, man. we got a little delusion. Yeah, you know, just in case, just in case. Yeah. yeah it's very interesting. Very yeah. interesting story. Yeah. Very cool. Very, very cool. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I think that's it.